Okay, so the foundation to learning trigonometry all starts with something called the unit circle. So if you are taking a class like pre-calculus or trigonometry, you are certainly going to run into the unit circle. And what I'm going to do here is give you a quick introduction. I'm going to try to get you to understand the main idea behind the unit circle in about 10 minutes. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. And for those of you that are at this level of math, uh, full trigonometry and or pre-calculus, and you want my full course instruction on all things at this level of math, check out my full pre-calculus course. You'll find a link to it in the description of this video. But let's go ahead and get into the unit circle. I'm not going to be able to cover everything here, but I will give you a good general introduction to what this is all about. All right, so first things first, we are talking about a circle. Uh, of course, the unit circle, we're talking about a circle on the XY plane, and uh, the center is at the origin 0, 0. But what makes the unit circle the unit circle is it's a circle with a radius of 1. That is the main idea. So you have a circle on the XY coordinate plane. Its center is at 0, 0, but the radius of this circle is 1. All right, so that is the first main concept that you need to understand. And now the second uh, concept is the following. So any point along this circle, of course, the circle here has a radius 1. Any particular point we can define by rectangular coordinates, i.e. x, y coordinates along this circle. Okay, so this particular uh, point right here, we can just assign some sort of x, y coordinate uh, to it, maybe something like 3, 2. But there is a whole nother world here, of course we are talking about trigonometry, that we are going to define locations or points on this circle. So this is going to be the next kind of main idea about the unit circle. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about that right now. Okay, so again, we can define a point on the circle using rectangular point, points, x, y uh, ordered pairs, but we can also do something completely different. Now, if we look here, we have this circle with the radius of 1, but we have a lovely right triangle underneath this 1. Okay. Now, I'm assuming you have some understanding of basic right angle trigonometry. Typically, you learn this stuff like in geometry. But uh, here, if we have an angle, okay, now we have to notice the angle starts on the x-axis. All right. This is called the initial side of an angle. Let me kind of draw it right here. So when you start... Um, Defining angles in trigonometry and standard position this is a whole nother kind of nomenclature that you need to understand. It starts right here in something called the initial side. And then we're going to go counterclockwise to the terminal side. This forms the angle. And when we have this angle starting at 0, 0 here on our unit circle, this is what we call an angle in standard position. All right, so we have some angle theta right here. And when we have this angle, we can get the uh, this side right here along the x-axis. This is going to be the cosine of that angle. Okay, and again, uh, for those of you that have some basic right uh, right angle, uh, right triangle, excuse me, right triangle trigonometry knowledge like SOHCAHTOA, just basic uh, trigonometric ratios, you should understand this. Now again, unit circle. This is stuff that is taught at the higher level trigonometry levels. Uh, and uh, pre-calculus, so it's kind of assumed that you have some basic knowledge of trigonometric ratios. But the y part, or this side of this right triangle, we can uh, define as sine of this angle. So that means we can define this point, instead of using rectangular coordinates, with uh, this system right here, cosine of this angle and sine of this angle. Okay, That is also another way we can define a point along the unit circle. And this is going to be key here, right? So cosine theta, sine theta is another way we can define that point. Now, you can go from rectangular coordinates to these coordinates, and you will have to. But again, we're just kind of building out the basics of the unit circle. All right, so we talked about initial side, uh, terminal side, and standard position. Now, let's go ahead and talk about something very cool here, which is, let me kind of uh, scroll down. The Pythagorean theorem, the Pythagorean theorem, right? So here, 
we have the x side of this right triangle. This is y. And we know the hypotenuse here is 1. So when you think about the Pythagorean theorem, we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Well, c squared is the hypotenuse. So we already have 1 here, right, defined uh, as the unit circle. So the hypotenuse is already 1. So we can think of the Pythagorean theorem as this. This is our x, this is our y, so it's x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. All right, but now that we know that our x coordinate, um, when we have ordered pairs here, is the same thing as cosine theta, and our y coordinate is the same thing as sine theta, we can kind of replace this x and y here uh, in our Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 with sine and cosine, and we end up with this right here, cosine theta squared plus sine theta squared is equal to 1. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is going to be super um, familiar to you, <laughs> for those of you that are taking trigonometry and are pre-calculus, because this is what we call a trigonometric identity, all right? Uh, typically, it's sine. It doesn't make a difference if it's sine or cosine, but it's sine sine squared of an angle plus cosine squared of an angle is equal to 1. All right, you're going to learn a ton of trigonometric identities, but this is a very, very important one and a very uh, common one. And a trigonometric identity is basically a law, a relationship. And again, if you're like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm a little bit lost here. Well, again, uh, I'm just giving you a quick review of things that you're going to see. Now, another thing that you're going to have to learn in trigonometry uh, and or pre-calculus, you're going to have to memorize a lot of common angles. So let's go to take a look at those right now. But before we do, I'm going to ask you to quickly support this channel by hitting that subscribe button. Now, I am not shy to ask for help. And if you're at this level of math, first of all, I congratulate you for studying trigonometry, being brave enough to take on, you know, pre-calculus or trigonometry or whatever level of math, uh, you know, that you're in. But this is a higher level of math. Indeed, you're going to be challenged, even if you've done well in school before up to this point, you know, Algebra 2, College Algebra. There's a lot of advanced material at this level, okay? So when you struggle, make sure you get help. You should always uh, start with your teacher. But if you like my teaching style, I've been doing this for decades, and uh, I have a super comprehensive pre-calculus course that will break down all aspects of trigonometry and, of course, uh, advanced math found in pre-calculus. You can find that in the link in the description. But if this video is uh, helping you out, make sure to hit that subscribe button and, and, uh, and that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. All right, so... Um, I'm only kind of glancing on some of the uh, main concepts of the unit circle, but one of the things that you're going to have to know, and these are this is only a sampling of the angles. These are must-know angles that you're going to have to, uh, quite frankly, memorize in trigonometry. You're going to have to find these things over and over and again, and uh, there's a lot more. So let's talk about these angles in degrees. You can see these same angles in radians. And if you don't know what a radian is, you're going to learn this in trigonometry as well. But uh, these are some common angles. Again, this chart is really going to fill up for a lot of you out there. But let's just take a quick sample of this, and we'll call, uh, call this video a wrap. All right, so 30 degrees. All right, so we have cosine, sine, and tangent. Now, the tangent of an angle is equal to the sine divided by uh, cosine. This is a, another identity, just in case you didn't know, but we can define tangent by the sine divided by cosine. All right, so we have the cosine, sine, and tangent, basic trigonometric functions, and these angles are going to be used everywhere in trigonometry. So we're looking at them as uh, degrees, but again, they have radian equivalents. So let's go ahead and just quickly review. So 30 degrees... The cosine of 30 degrees is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. The sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. And the tangent of 30 degrees, one way to express that is the square root of 3 over 3. There is another way, but it's equivalent to this. All right, so 45 degrees, the cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. The sine is the same as the cosine, not surprisingly enough. The square root of 2 over 2. And then the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. All right, so cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. The sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. And the tangent of 60 degrees is the square root of 3. Now, one thing that's interesting about the, the unit circle, okay, is uh, kind of the main idea of trigonometry. 
So we have this uh, circle, right? We have the circle radius of one, and these angles, okay, or an angle starting here on the initial side and then just kind of going this way. So you can kind of go over and over and over again, right? You can have angles greater than 360 degrees or uh, two pi radians, right? Which is the equivalent of 360 degrees, but you're going to continue to get the same values, right? This is why we call um, trigonometric functions periodic functions, because uh, if you look at the graph of like, let's say sine and cosine, the values are bouncing between one and negative one. Now, tangent is a different deal, but again, you know, you you have these um, values that are bouncing around for these various angles. Okay, so you have what we call periodic functions because they're kind of repeating over and over again. All right, so hopefully this was a nice basic introduction to some of the things that you have to uh, look forward to. And uh, as I indicated, this is a lot of math. It's a big step up for those of you that are coming from Algebra 2, Advanced Algebra, College Algebra, you know, Pre-Calculus, you know, Trigonometry, and again, Trigonometry is only a part of Pre-Calculus. Uh, so, for example, in my course, oh, Trigonometry might be like maybe one-third of the course, but there is a lot to learn here. Believe me, it's going to challenge even the best of students, but this is awesome stuff because once you get through uh, Pre-Calculus and Trigonometry and everything else, you'll be ready to take on the Calculus world which is definitely, uh, you know, uh, pretty exciting and an interesting world in and, uh, in and of itself. But uh, hopefully this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.